all right what is up guys in this video i want to just show you how to you can easily create a mod pack over technicpack.net also called technic launcher well the application you use to use the mod packs called technic launcher but yeah you get the point so basically what mod pack is it's basically a altered version of minecraft where you can install different cool things we have for example big reactors that allows you to create a reactor to, to generate power you can craft a me system with applied energistics too you can uh, yeah if you can find a mod for it you can do it it basically and that requires some, some special stuff to do so what technic pack allows you to do is easily get that running and make it work now i just want to say out i'm not sponsored in any way making this video I just do it because I've seen some people asking how you actually create a mod pack and uh, people have actually sent links for it where they can go read on the subject but sometimes people actually want to see how they how you do it instead of I instead of making it yourself instead of reading it so to say so I decided why the hell not I just make a video about it so as you can see here I am on the uh, Technic pack website and I've signed in to my account so if you don't if you do not have an account here go and make one and once you made it come back here and we're gonna go to my mod no we're gonna go to create a mod pack and then we're going to select a name for it I'm just gonna make this I just gonna call this uh, YouTube box and test test pack tets test pack and we're gonna select 1710 because that's the most popular right now, I think. You can select any of these versions. But you have to make sure the mod you want exists for the version you select. So if you select 1.10.2, you have to make sure that your mod that you're getting for your your for your for um, game, or maybe even server, is 1.10.2 compatible. So I would go once at a time because that's like the, the, the biggest bet is that like almost all mods existing out there today supports one seven ten. Almost all of them. There there are exceptions. I'm not gonna say everyone every mod does because I have no idea. Since I don't know every mod in the world, but you you get the point. And uh, this option is just if you want your pack to be hidden, I would say make it hidden from the beginning. Because that makes it so when you publish your the when you're done with this step your mod pack won't show up directly on the mod pack index so to, spe so to speak so if you just select this your pack will be hidden until you unselect it later on which means you can set up everything you can make it everything how you want it and then you want people to actually see your mod pack this is actually recommended you don't have to do this but I just say it's recommended to do so short description gonna just give it this is a short description and press I agree to this mod pack terms you can go read, it, read this through they're actually pretty helpful understanding what you are allowed to do with your mod pack and the guidelines on publishing it here on Technic pack if this, this if this doesn't fit you you can find another platform to go and distribute your mod pack on I do not provide any support for the other the other platforms this is for Technic pack .net, not anything else like AT launcher or whatever those are called so now we're gonna hit create mod pack and then we'll be taken to a page that looks something like this except this your name your username your description but now it says this pack will not show in the mod pack index until it's properly configured either select the url for a zip or configure solder i would say do not try to configure solder right away learn what it is first i'm not even quite sure what it is but i know it's just Another another form of distri distributing your mod pack. It's like you host your own type of website that's integrated with this and allows it for frequent updates on certain mods and everything. I I don't know how to describe it, but it's really freaking co complicated to deal with if you don't know what you're doing. So leave that out. So we, what we're gonna focus on is set a URL for a zip, and we're gonna use Dropbox for this for a number of reasons. One, Dropbox is like Guaranteed to be 24/7 online, so your mod pack one, your mod pack link won't go down. And from what I know, you cannot use Mediafire or even uh, Mega or whatever the files are called 
It's the most easiest thing using Dropbox. That's what I have found. That's what a lot of people are doing. I, I'm just thinking that it's the best for this type of thing. So what we want to do now is hit edit mod pack. And then we can see mod pack location. So um, this is your, if you read this, uh, this direct URL for your modpack zip. This file must be public, publicly accessible by the platform, the site. You cannot use sites that do not directly serve the file, for example, Mediafire. That means like you have the zip file has to be locally hosted and it has to be like your modpack v1.zip. Not like uh, download.com slash tq1 la 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 everything what it now says that doesn't work it has to be a direct mod link and that will uh, and that will show that to you in dropbox in a few seconds so first we have to go and actually create the mod pack files itself that is ex extremely easy actually what you do is create a new folder on your desktop just gonna call this test pack just because you, you can name this folder whatever you want I'm just making this I'm just naming it like that and now we're gonna create a few new folders in here. We're gonna create one called bin. We're gonna create one called config. We're gonna create one called mods. This is the general folders you need. So what you're gonna do is go into your bin folder. And now you have to go to the forge website, files.minecraft4.net and select your 1.7.10 version. So go on the 1.7, select 1.7.10 and then you have to select your a universal instance. I would go with the latest version all, always. Sometimes some mods maybe want an older version but I'm going with the latest for this one. So you want to select the universal build because the, the, there is something with the universal build that allows you to run the file within a command prompt or something instead of running it as a program. I don't know how to explain it. So once the file is downloaded down here, uh, we just move it into the folder and we name it to modpack.yar. And that is basically it. That's basically all you have to do. Now you can just you have to install some mods too. So I'm just going to open up my mod pack files. Uh, this is the wrong folder. I'm just gonna go to. I'm gonna open up my mod pack, so to say, and copy some mods over. So uh, let's go into mods. Okay, so let's say for this I want. Um, I don't know. Um, let's just say better title screen and custom main menu. Let, let's just go for that. Boom. We just get them in there. Make sure they're 1710. Or at least compa uh, compatible with uh, 1710. And uh, then what you basically do is you make you take these three folders and make it to a zip file. I'm using WinRAR for this. And you can just call this whatever you want. You can call it test pack, test pack one, version 1 or YouTube pack version 1, whatever you call it. It's your... It's just so you can keep track of which file it is and which version you have and etc etc. It, it, it's just basic. It's just how you want to name it so you can keep track of which file is which when you have multiple versions of the file. And yeah, so we just make it to a zip file, which makes it like three megs. So what we don't want to go and do now is go to Dropbox, which you can see I have multiple files like right here. Go to upload files, locate the uh, test pack folder, and just upload the uh, test pack file into Dropbox. Once it's there, you click share. And now when it says like this, you click create a link and you press copy link go back to the mod pack website and paste it in there and now when we are at this page thing you have to select uh, question mark dl equals zero 
2 equals 1. That is a common mistake that a lot of people are doing. And they don't get their download link to work. It doesn't download everything. It does just downloads not like everything except the mods themselves. Or whatever reason the download link might even not work at all. So that is a common misconception that everyone does. I Even I did it in the beginning until I understood it. So this is just an easy way to show you how to do it. Okay, remember it's 1710. That's why we downloaded the um, 1710 Forge that we renamed. Because that... Here it says, it even says here. This is the Minecraft that will be served with your mod pack. Do not include the Minecraft jar in your mod pack. It is against the Minecraft TOS and uh, redistribute the uh, to re redistribute the Minecraft jar. Basically, what this site does is that it will download the game version 1710 in this case because we selected it and add it into your mod pack once it's downloading, so it can launch a proper version of the game. So this site is actually downloading from Mojang's website or servers, and they are not hosting that file. That means that they cannot get whatever legal reasons and whatnot. So, so remember to have the same version of, of this one as same as the Forge version we got and the mods. And uh, we want this to be keep being hidden because we don't want this mod pack to show. For, uh, force directory change, this is not needed in the most case. In, in, in most cases you don't need, need even have to do this. If you don't know what you're doing and you're a really advanced user. So, uh, modpack tags. Here you can select uh, different types of search tags that you want. So if you want them to search for like seek and destroy or like survival or even server. Just select them as tags like, like I have here. Because it's from my previous uh, modpack I was creating. Uh, factions, server, uh, survival, server, modded, trollcraft was from a previous mod pack I was creating. One of my most popular mod packs right now, actually. So, a mod pack website. This is just if you have a website for your mod pack. If you do not, you can leave it open. Otherwise, you just pick your, just put your link in there, your to your website. Server pack. This is if you have made a server for the mod pack and you want to share the server. If you want to share the, a public server that you can download and just start up themselves. In that case you put the zip file, like we did up here with Dropbox, you put that in here but with the uh, with the server pack package instead. Um, inverse header color, that is basically just changing the um, change some color stuff on your, uh, on your modpack page. So, you, in most cases, you don't need, really need to change that. In most cases. Um, Discord server ID. This is actually a pretty cool thing. They have enabled so you, they can show stats of your um, Discord server. Like, the amount of play, uh, people in your Discord server. Who's online, who's offline, who's in which channel, etc. So, you just need to go. I'm going to show you in my Discord, actually. So, if you go here. You go into settings. No, wrong thing. If you go to your. Let's go to an old server I don't even give a crap about. Looks like this. There's no one in here. Um, let's go to the server. Let's go to server settings. Wrong thing. Server settings. Go down to uh, widget. And then you copy the server ID. That is the thing you want to, and the uh, invitation channel you can. That's actually pretty good to select. Um, it's just what channel you wanted to join once they click on join. Uh, so you copy the server ID, copy, and then you hit paste in here. If this is just if you wanted, you don't you don't need to use this. It's just if you want it. And once that is done, you can just hit upload uh, up update mod pack, and boom. Now we can go back to the overview tab, and as you can see here, Discord is just searching right now. I think, I think it just takes a while, but it will it will work in a while. So now when that is done, you just need to open up your wrong. I only ha already have an instance of Microsoft running. So now you open up the 
Technic. And you just copy your link. And there's the console for that instance. So you go into mod pack, you paste in the link, and boom, you can see it here. If you click on it, it will just open up the page again. And now you can hit install. And you see, boo -do 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 -do, it's installing. It's really quick because it's only like a 2-3 megabyte file. Since it didn't need any more than that. So now when that, that is installed, you can see it right here, you can select a build of it. And I have two versions of my own because one is the development build and the one and one of them is the official thing. And so now to check it, we just go to if it actually did install correctly. Uh, we can go to percent app data percent. Go to dot technic mod packs YouTube box and test pack. Now it has created a bunch of other folders because it does that. If you check in mods, our mods are still in there. That means it actually did install correctly, our mods went in there. And if you check in bin, there's a few other files. This is the file we added. This is the file we added. The other files downloaded from Mojang or through Technic or whatever. So that is technically how you create the mod pack. It's that simple. Now every mod has to be tested and see if it works in the client, of course. That's how the process works. You have to try it, everything. Yeah, that's why I recommend having one public version like I have right here. One official version that everyone downloads and runs. And one development build where you and maybe your um, developers are testing stuff. Testing mods, make sure they work, configure stuff in configs and everything. Before you update the official mod pack and maybe even server. Just to have everything clean, make sure you don't break the current version of the mod pack you have and everything. It's just the way how I do it. Everyone doesn't have to do it my way, but it's just an easier way. So, and once you hit play, it will start loading up the Minecraft game and everything. And also, this is a pretty cool trick. So if you go to launch your options, and you press on show console. What well, if you select this, basically my, this game, the... Um, Technic Launcher will start with a console like this. So this is stuff that act are actually ha happening inside my game right now. Because I can just show you right now. If my one wouldn't freeze like hell. Oh, it crashed. My game crashed because, yeah, GP. But this is just a console. So this w what this allows you to detect is like if you're if your game crashes for a mod, because a mod like messed up somewhere, you can see it right here in the console instead of going into the mod pack in the mod pack config files. So you can see the logs right here in the console, which is actually pretty good because that means you can see okay, this mod is the one that crashed. How what does it need? Does it need any other mod to function, or did it just not function because I did something wrong? Well, this is actually really helpful in most cases. That's why I love this extension. So, this is highly recommended when you're creating your mod pack. Whereas in any case, so I would highly recommend going and enabling this if you haven't already. So, yeah, that's about it. That is how you create your own mod pack. So, yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't hit and hit the like button. If you didn't like this type of video, hit the dislike button. And yeah, so thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.